Hey folks, Ms. Gosling here. In this video, you're going to learn about graphing with acceleration. By the end of the video, you'll be able to analyze motion graphs for accelerating objects. So let's go ahead and get started. And we're going to go and get started by jumping right into things. So we want to figure out the acceleration of the object whose motion is described in the, in the graph below. And the first thing you want to do when you look at any graph is you want to figure out what kind of graph it is. So I can see here that I've got time on my x-axis and velocity on my y-axis, and the title of my graph is velocity versus time. So you know this is a velocity time graph. So what that means is that my y-axis is being measured in meters per second, and my x-axis is being measured in seconds. What that also tells me is that I am going to figure out the acceleration of this object by finding the slope of the graph. Let me show you why. So there's kind of two explanations that you can use. So first of all, we can look at, the, at what's being measured itself. So our x-axis is time and our y-axis is velocity. So if we say slope is equal to our rise over our run, on our graph, that means that our slope is equal to our final velocity, so v final minus v initial, or perhaps as you guys are more used to seeing it, v minus u over t. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and leave m in there for now. So if we multiply both sides by t, what we get is that m times t is equal to v minus u, or v is equal to u plus m times t. Hopefully you guys recognize this equation. Um, because if we erase that m and replace it with a, what that gives me is my, uh, is your fir my first kinematics equation. A little more simply, we know that our rise over run can be written as change in velocity over change in time, which is the definition of acceleration. So that's two different ways to look at it. We can look at it by solving, turning into a motion graph picture, or we can look at the, acceleration, the definition of acceleration. The third way we can look at this is by looking at our units. So my y-axis is measured in meters per second. So, the, so my rise over run is going to be measured in meters per second divided by seconds, or meters over seconds squared, which is the units for acceleration. So this is a couple ways of just being able to see why slope shows acceleration in one of these motion graphs. So you've had a chance to look at the proof. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to erase it all um, because I would like for you guys to be able to have some space to calculate our acceleration. So to calculate my acceleration, I'm going to find the slope of this graph. I can pick any two, uh, two points on the graph. I'm going to pick the two easiest ones, which are the first point and the last point. So my acceleration is equal to my rise over my run my change in velocity over my change in time. So that's going to be my final velocity minus my initial velocity over my final time minus my initial time. So the velocity at my final point is, I can go ahead and I can go over to the y-axis, is 10. And my initial velocity is, I can see at the y-axis, 0. My final time, again looking at my final point and going onto the x-axis is 5, and my initial time is also 0. So that gives me that my acceleration is equal to 10 over 5, or 2 meters per second squared. So the trick here, guys, is that to find acceleration, um, we are going to find the slope of a velocity versus time graph. Now, one thing to know, if your graph is not a velocity versus time graph, if it's acceleration versus time or position versus time, you can't use slope. But if you have a velocity versus time graph and you're asked to find acceleration, what you're going to do is you're going to find the slope of the graph. Next, we can also use our acceleration versus time graphs to figure out our velocities. So what we can do is we can actually take an acceleration versus time graph and use it to figure out um, an object's velocity after a certain amount of time, or as this question is asking us to do, to draw the velocity time graph of that object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a table 
of the acceleration of the velocity of my object after each point in time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with zero. So I'm going to have my times. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to go ahead and figure out my velocity. Now the important thing to know here is that for an acceleration versus time graph, velocity is equal to the area under my uh, under my a versus t graph. So that's how we're going to figure out our velocities. So for our first second, or so for at zero, we're not going to worry about our velocity. We're going to assume that our initial velocity is zero. At second number one, we can use the area under our graph to figure out our change in velocity between zero seconds and one second. So that is going to be our base times our height or one time one second times two meters per second squared, or two meters per second. So that's gonna be our velocity after one second. Next, we can figure out what our change in velocity is between one second and two seconds. So remember at one second, we're already going at two meters per second. Between one second and two seconds, we go from two meters per second and we are going to add another one times two, or two meters per second. So we're going from two meters per second to four meters per second, because remember, we're not going back to zero each time. So we're gonna always add our new, our, our, our new areas. The other way I could solve this, guys, was I could just figure out the area of this whole thing, and that would give me four meters per second. Um, so you can either break it into chunks and add each chunk together, um, or you can just find the area under the graph, the whole graph at that point. Um, it's the same thing, um, two different methods of finding the same answer. Similarly, I could do the same thing between two and three seconds, giving me six, between three and four seconds, which will bring me up to eight, and between four and five seconds, which is gonna bring me up to a velocity of 10. And my next step, of course, is going to be to graph them. So let's go ahead and draw our graph. I'm going to, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I am going to draw each of the points. So we start at 0, 0. We can go to 1, 2, 2, 4, 3, 6, 4, 8, and 5, 10. And all I'm going to need to do is connect my dots to draw my velocity versus time graph for my object. Now, just a note, guys, if we had said that the object started at 2, then I would just add 2 each time. So we go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Um, so I guess the thing that's important to know here um, that I just want to make sure you take away is that the area under your graph tells you your change in velocity for between the two times that you're finding the area for. Um, so you're always going to add that to whatever your previous velocity was. Um, so I'm just going to let you know that. Um, I want to make sure you think about that. However, this is very similar from how, for how we figured out our position using a velocity time graph, which is why I went through this pretty quickly. And that brings us to takes. So the takeaways here, I'm actually going to try to connect what we just learned about graphing with acceleration to what we, you guys learned previously about going from position versus time to velocity versus time graphs and back. So when you go from a position versus time graph to a velocity versus time graph, we're going to use slope. So and then when we go from a velocity versus time graph to an acceleration versus time graph, we're also going to use slope. So these two things here, are the same processes. And the way that I like to think about it is when you add more time to the de denominator, then we're going to use slope. So we're adding seconds, we're using slope. Um, so you're going from meters to meters per second to meters per second squared. So the more s's we're adding, the more, the, the, the more slopes we need to find. Then, um, if we are going from an acceleration versus time graph to a velocity versus time graph, or a velocity versus time graph to a position versus time graph, we're going to use area. So um, I don't really have a cute mnemonic for this. The way that I like to remember it again is more seconds goes with slope. Um, so if we're taking away seconds, maybe a acceleration or area away, uh, we'll start with A. So taking away seconds, we're going to use area.
And this is just going to be, these are two processes you're just going to need to be able to do. So you're going to need to remember how to go from a position graph to a velocity graph to an acceleration graph, and from an acceleration graph to a velocity graph to a position graph. Um, so what you're going to be doing a lot this time, guys, is you'll be taking a velocity graph, finding your position, and finding your acceleration. Um, you also may be asked to take a, an acceleration graph and use that to find your position your, to, to create your velocity time and position time graph. Similarly, you could be asked to take a position graph and create your, your velocity versus time and acceleration versus time graphs. So I just want to make sure you're aware of that as you move forward. With that being said, here we go. Best of luck and happy solving.